नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच कम्स विद अ टी वाई वी एम यू नोट दैट इज थैंक यू वेरी मच से वी हैव सच अ रिच हेरिटेज एंड हिस्ट्री इंडिया इज द लैंड ऑफ द वेदास द उपनिषद एंड सो मेनी परफेक्ट मास्टर्स एज अ कंट्री हाउ डिड वी गेट सो फार फ्रॉम द ट्रूथ or was the truth always just for a very limited few tyvm <laughs> karuna the misfortune of india is that it is the land of the upanishads it is the land of the buddhas the kabis the nanaks the farids that which is too abundantly available becomes unavailable and the one who is very abundantly available must become a little unavailable so that he again becomes available masters after masters scriptures upon scriptures the common folk start taking things for granted every village has a dozen fakirs you throw a stone in any direction and it's going to hit a sadhu hmm that's the way the human constitution is we respect that which is rare what do you value everyday events or festivals that come once in an year if you meet kabir every 2 hours then you will start avoiding him it's too much that's the misfortune of india too much grace and that's how we are we need to be hungry to enjoy a meal if meals become too abundant then we start choosing hunger because unless hunger is there meals are of no value it's a strange thing you know to respect a kabir you must first of all not be a kabir a kabir is one with kabir there is no question of respect there and to greatly respect the kabir you must be greatly separated from a kabir so there is separation hmm even today you see when i speak at rishikesh
the western crowd, the foreigners. They listen to me with rapt attention. Because it is uncommon for them to come across the kind of stuff that I deal in. Indians here everybody is a Brahmavid. You tell them we are going to talk wisdom. The Guru will speak. They will say I have my Bhavi and her dog. And they are great gurus. Four fakirs live in the basement of my house. What guru do I need? Even my cat sings bhajans. Even my goat has a beard. What respect do you deserve? For the foreigners, it's a different affair. Their jaws drop. If you look at their pictures clipped when they are absorbed in the session, then you would know what it means. To be attentive. It's cyclical. You get a lot and then you are deprived. All land is just land. India was blessed to be the spiritual center of the world. With spirituality comes wellness, health, Greatness and when greatness and wellness and openness are lost, you must know that there is nothing spiritual left about that land. It's a strange thing, you see, but in their compassion, the saints sometimes do a disservice. They bring great words, teachings to even those who don't deserve them, even those whose time has yet not come. So the words become popular in the wrong domains. The word Brahm, for example, should have 
never been present in the dictionary at all. This word should never have fallen in the ears of those who were not yearning for it. But the saints popularized the word. They made it very public. <coughs> they turned it into something of a cheap public utility by the roadside that every Tom, Dick, Harry is using and using without the required payment. Now the word is the only way or one of the few ways to bring the mind to the truth and when the word becomes cheap currency then that rare way is lost, compromised, becomes ineffective. The great method is rendered useless due to excessive usage. Now, when you listen to the word Brahm, it does not stir up the great ocean within you. Nothing happens because you have listened to it a million times. Now, when you come upon a Shiva statue, you just look at it with your eyes full of usual boredom. Shiva does not infuse vigor into you because Shiva is a household thing now. You may have never really surrendered to Shiv. You may have never really met Shiv. But you have been given so many stories about Shiv that you feel that you know it all. And daily morning there is the reading of the Shiv Puran and the thousands of mantras and japs and stories and rituals and deities and what not. You start feeling that you know you have it. And God comes only to those who first of all declare that they don't have him. In India, everybody is an Aastik. In India, everybody knows and when you know then he doesn't come to you. We know India is a religious country. So everybody is religious. And when everybody is religious, then nobody is religious. Festivals after festivals. There is no day in the entire calendar that does not host half a dozen festivals. There are more festivals than days. So festivals are now competing with each other. Don't you see that? On one particular day, there are three festivals. Now the ones who want to wish you, they say, wishing you this, this and this. 
That's how the holdings go, don't they? And all the festivals are related to God Almighty. You are celebrating Him so much and so often that you have no real celebration left. Diwali comes and goes. You remain dark. What is therefore now needed is a flattening of the old religious order. It was useful once upon a time. It has served its time. It must go. You must start again, afresh. As fresh as the Upanishads, as fresh as the revelation of the Quran, totally new, ancient but totally new, totally new and totally relevant and contemporary. Still ancient, because truth cannot be new. But the declaration must now be very, very contemporary. Very applicable, very useful, very up to date. Only that will bring back spirituality to India. And when spirituality will return to India, then greatness comes to the whole world. In fact, that is my definition of India. The place where spirituality is. Not a landmass. Wherever there is spirituality, that place is India. India is lovable. Hmm? 